everyone, it's Carol here at Oak House Journals. I promised you a flip through of my completed junk journal January 2024 uh, journal and this is it. Now, before I go into the actual journal itself and open it up, let me just say that there is a video for each of the pages that I created in here for each of the prompts set by Meg over at Meg Journals. And there is also another video showing how I've made the cover and this fabric um, closure. So the journal itself is pr pretty grungy, uh, or certainly the cover is, as you can see. Uh, in terms of size, it's five and a half inches wide by eight. And in centimetres, that's round about 14 centimetres in width by 20 centimetres in height. And I did it with a five hole pamphlet stitch going through the cover and there are four signatures inside. I'm not sure if you can see those. Um, now this is a semi hard cover. I made it out of two lots of packaging and then covered it over with fabric. Um, details of the products I used are listed underneath the videos where I created the cover. So I'm not listing under this video what the fabric is because I can't remember off the top of my head. So it's, as I say, it's semi soft, although it is fabric covered and I embellish the fabric that I used with some speckled egg spray through a stencil to give me these blue splotches. And I went over the stitch design on the actual or in the actual fabric itself. Um, doing some messy stitching in black Gutterman's thread on my sewing machine just to try and make it pop. So this is actual stitching you're seeing here, but all I did was go over the actual stitching on the design, um, fabric design. So let me put my belt or closure to one side and open up my little journal. I've made a little pocket here with a celery closure and in the pocket I've got my prompts so let me just close up my little salary closure this is just some hemp twine that I had in amongst my stash here's my prompts I just photocopied those off Meg's website I knew that I wanted to have a title page because I wasn't going to put anything on the front of my cover so I created a title page all the base paper for my signatures was just some text that I had from an old military dissertation on military music. So in most cases, I covered over that paper. Um, it was all coffee stained, but as I say, in most cases, I covered over that paper um, and I just used it as a base. Here you can actually see a little bit of it. So this is my title page. And yes, there is a tutorial on this page as well, as well as the bonus page that's at the back and I've just put a sticker on here saying junk journal January 2024 and then just layered up various um, bits and bobs and uh, this stringy stuff here is just a remnant that I found inside the spine of an old vintage book when I took it apart. I have a few pieces of this, absolutely loved it, have been hoarding it for ages and I decided I was gonna use it in here. So I need to refer to the prompts here and what order they're in because they're not in order in my book um, because some seem to work better as journal spreads sitting together than others did. So um, I will actually point out which are which on the journal prompt list here but to mark them off I actually just put a little number in either a corner or somewhere on my actual page indicating which prompt it related to so this is the first page and it's prompt number one and the first prompt was resolution so for this one I just got a piece of acetate packaging which is pretty rough at the sides I tried to create a fractured look and to print on the acetate some of the actual resolutions that I wanted to try and take on board this year. The main one is the word be. So I wanted to be creative, I wanted to be kind, I want to be aware, I want to be gregarious, accepting, engaged, enthusiastic, 
a million and one things that start with the word and the idea of the fractured or broken acetate with a hole here outlining the word b is that more often than not i break my resolutions as much as i try to keep them i probably do break more than i actually manage to keep so that was my interpretation of this prompt for page one which was resolutions this was just um, a background that i'd created using some ciano wrap or we call it cling film here in the UK and it was just in amongst my my stash so that was prompt number one prompt number two was quote and that's this page here and I've just got a little Tim Holtz paper clip there with some voil and it was just a little secret tuck spot I created with my quote inside there accept what is let go of what was and have faith in what will be love that quote try and live live my life by it but um, sometimes it doesn't work but I really love that quote and um, yeah it's definitely a favorite of mine so I've just used a partial sticker there to hold my little page closed i don't really need this paper clip at the top it will stay shut but i just wanted to have a little bit of frou-frou there to tie it in with this page this is prompt number three and this was throwback or the prompt for this page was throwback so i actually sort of went back in time by creating another tag that i have previously cr created and i also chose this image here as throwback because this is the same woman obviously in her mature or senior years and this is her in her youth so for this one i have a little paper clip tucked inside there and this flap opens got a journaling spot there this is a little flap that folds up and i've got some little tiny cards in there um, to mimic postcards etc journaling cards this is all made from a vintage document a bit of lace there um, this opens up there is a lace pocket here this was just some paper i had in my stash from some origami envelopes and this opens out another pocket here vintage lace across the top and a journaling card made out of some piano roll paper um, just tucked up in there so just a very simple idea a revisit of a tag as I say that I've made in the past but enjoyed making and wanted to to do it again thinking that it would hit this prompt for throwback and as you can see I've got some frou-frou on the front here some little bits of lace and a button there and that's why I wanted to tie in with the um, Swiss dot tool on the other side so this page is throwback um, the next prompt is number four, tuck spot, and this is tuck spot in my journal. Again, I've got paper clip holding it closed because this was just a fold of paper that I tucked in and I put one of my scrappy scraps on the front here. And um, when you open it up, this is a vintage document that I've just folded in such a way that it opens up so you've got a journaling spot. And then if I close that over, you can see how it looks on this side and these are just some little pieces that I tucked in. There is a portion here, which this fabric tag covered with vellum can sit in if it wants to. So that can go in there like, like that. And then this just closes up and this little one just tucks in the top there like that. So nothing special. I'm gonna turn it around the other way because I like the embossing on here and the handmade paper. You just fold that in properly so it lies flat and that just goes in there like that so it's just a fold idea creating a tuck spot so that was prompt number four prompt number five was daily log now daily log prompt number five is tucked in here and all i did was make some swivel tab cards with a pocket on the front as you can see i've got various bits and bobs tucked in those pockets um, I wrote or I printed labels for down the side saying today, tomorrow and the day after and it goes today, yesterday and the day before. I thought that might be something different from actually just saying Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And on the reverse of each one, I've just got some vintage 
ledger paper which is blank which I thought you could write your daily log on if you were that way inclined and the vellum pockets on the front I just thought if you were out you could put receipts and such in there um, to form part of your daily log. So that just sits in this side pocket here. The next prompt is prompt number six, which was memory. So I went with this little image of me as a child, which I ripped up and then I did a little bit of my own journaling in between to kind of pick out what this picture represented or the memory that it it evoked in my mind. The next prompt is stitch. So it's number seven and it was this page. So I'm gonna swivel it round. And again, I did another one of those scrappy scraps and it just flips up and you've got a journaling spot in there and a journaling spot there. So that's number seven. And if I box clever with this paper clip, I can get it to work so that it covers both pages and holds it close doesn't really go with the whole theme but doesn't matter so that's page seven the next prompt is eight neutral and I didn't want to put neutral next to this page so I've gone over the page here and uh, this page is number eight for neutrals and I've just layered up all different pieces of paper and tape to represent neutral um, there's a wax seal here with some wax dots and it's a mixture of vintage documents and vellum and masking tape, handwritten vintage document, little piece of um, Oriental or Asian paper there. And what else, um, what else, what else? Just a bit of stenciling, that's about it to create that page. So that was my one for neutral. The next prompt is number nine, which is foliage. And I created this page. Now this was some fabric and I created a pocket by fussy cutting the fabric and backing it with some vellum. And then because this page was stitched, I put another one of those scrappy scraps in the pocket, vellum pocket that I created on this side. So there we go, that's uh, another one of those scrappy scraps. Love making those, really must get around and uh, uh, get around to making a few more. Okay, so, the next prompt was layered. So as you can see, I went for almost a little scrap pad here with neutral colors so that it blended with this page. And I used the same papers. Um, so there's book page, um, handmade paper, a little bit of the Oriental paper, a little bit left over of the vintage document. Um, this is stamped handmade paper. This was some um, greaseproof paper that I was doing some coffee dyeing with and this paper was actually on the rungs of the grills in my oven and it made these gorgeous marks and I've again I've been hoarding this for ages so I decided to use my final scrap in here and then at the back a vintage document so that's that one the next page this page is my page for prompt number 11 which was eclectic and I just went with various different images trying to mimic the eclectic look when you see pictures on a wall and that was the idea or the inspiration behind that one this is page or prompt number 12 which was torn edges so I tried to make it look like I was taking one of these images and having it blown up out of um, out of all proportion so that it kind of worked in a bizarre sort of way with this page that was my plan and as you can see I've used the same background paper here as on this one and I've mimicked it with some this is not splatters it's actually uh, a Tim Holtz stamp so uh, this was ink and I've done remnant rubs on on both pages so the idea was to make this look like a big picture um, so that it blended in with that page so that was um, prompt number 12 prompt number 13 was garden now I have got something tucked in here but I'll come back to that so this was my page for garden and what I wanted to do was have this as a rock garden in the background have this as a garden wall with flowers behind and in front and have this little flower fairy which you obviously always get in gardens and then this was a tag that I had in my stash with lots of remnant rub style washi stickers on and I thought that would go nice in here and, and give a focal element to the pocket that I created with this wall 
So that one goes in there like that. The next prompt is number 14, which was pattern. And I used some gorgeous pattern paper that I was gifted and I decided to work with that and still try and keep the same flow onto this page. So I've used the little pieces of wall up here. Um, those were the positive pieces. This was the negative piece. I've used some fussy cut flowers down here to match up with that and tried to basically use the same same colours. And this portion in here was a leftover remnant from this background piece there. So that's my journal spread for those two prompts, which was garden and pattern. Number 15 uh, was opposites and I created this um, journaling spot for opposites and um, yeah my idea was light and dark um, vintage papers and um, printed papers and handwritten papers um, brown paper against cream paper humans and dogs um, man and and or male and female um, what else adult and child numerals against text um, so th that was kind of my thinking behind this one. Try and pick out as many opposite as opposites as I could. And yeah, so that's that one. And that one tucks in this little pocket here. Um, going over the page 16, that was this one, which was flow. And I created an envelope for that. And this insert of vellum was supposed to represent flow as well as using this marble paper um since you saw it i have embellished it a little bit more i've added this label at the back here and a paper butterfly and a vellum butterfly um, down in this bottom corner only really to try and tie it in with this page which was um, my page for number 17 which was whimsical and there were hints of brown on here that I wanted to pick up on this page to kind of blend, blend them together. Because as you can see, I've used the same marbled paper up here and up here to tie in with this page. For Whimsical, I made one of these paper dolls as a, a like a little hidden journaling spot. So there she is. She's got some Tim Holtz acetate wings and she just um, slots down into her skirt and hopefully you wouldn't know it was a journaling spot. So that's Whimsical. Over the page, this is the back of the envelope I created for this page. And originally, the back was made out of this paper, the um, marbled paper. But I didn't like how it sat against this page. So I backed it with some of my own shaving foam technique paper here, which I've used on this page as well. So this one doesn't really have a number to it other than it's the back of this envelope for um, prompt number 16. So this page is prompt number 19, which was interactive. So for this one, I just created a tag and it's not working now, a tag which is magnetized with an image on the front. There we go. That image sits on the front. That's the back of the tag with a bit of collaging on there. And the idea is that this slips into the pocket like that and my little image stays put on the front of the pocket or if I pull the tag out, um, he stays put on the front of the tag. But it's all down to magnets uh, holding my image in place on this tag. Over the page, this is prompt 20 which was nature so I did an acetate flip up with some hydrangea flowers inside and then I've used a little journaling card inside a pocket there more dried hydrangeas down at the bottom there using a technique that I saw Louisa Hines will do so that one is prompt number 20 which is nature this page here was prompt number 18 which was borders so for this one again trying to keep it nice and light I just created three vellum pockets and I made a border of washi stickers rub on washi stickers down there I've used the same journaling card to go in the pockets just put a little die cut on the bottom and some rubs on there 
and that just tucks in there like that. So that's number 18. 19 you've already had, which was interactive, and 20 was nature. So 21, this is my page for 21, and it, the prompt for this one was peeking out. So this is the page I created. That's my cat that peeps out of this page. So let me show you this one. Um, I've got a little cat paper clip down here and I've got a tag that just sits on this little flap down here and that's because there is a little slit in there and inside there I've got, if I pull it out, a little journaling card that sits inside like that. So that's what it looks like, nothing special. So it sits inside like that. That's what the back of the tag looks like. And there's another little insert in there. And as I say, there's a little slit at the bottom, which means that it can sit over the top of that flap at the bottom of the page. Now, if I open up this flap, it is a little secret journaling spot. So you could journal in here and you could also journal on there if you wanted to. And then on the back, it's just a frame just for a bit of interest to sit behind the cat. I'm just gonna sit that on there. Now, you don't really need to have a paper clip to hold that in place, it will stay there, but I liked this stretching cat paper clip, so I wanted to use it on here just for another little bit of interest. So that's that. Um, so this is the page that he's peeping out of. Um, the next prompt was prompt number 22, which was bookshelf. So I created a little hidden pocket here behind all of these books and um, just covered them with some stickers that represent book spines. And then I printed off a pile of books off um, the internet to create the front of my pocket. And this was um, a journaling card or rather a library card that I had in my stash and I thought I would just use that. And obviously to take the look of this page over onto this one, which was what was left over from um, the earlier prompt, prompt, the Peking Cat, I just added some more of the books down here. Now I have to say in all of this journal, these two pages are the two that I like the least. They're just too grungy for me. Um, but I managed to hit the prompt by doing what I did. So it is as it is really. The next prompt is 23, which is texture. And this is what I created for my page for texture. A bit of Amazon packaging up there, some texture paste. And I tried to add some texture to my page by doing lots and lots of layers. So um, yeah, so that's that one. The next prompt is prompt number 24, which is fabric. So I had this fabric sample and the colours I thought were perfect, especially picking up the colour of this number three down there. So I created a little frame with it and then I put some more fabric behind and then to marry the two pages together, I put some texture paste over the top of that. So that's my piece for prompt number 24. Prompt number 25 is ombre. I've just got a little card stuck up in there to remind me that it's a, a pocket. And here all I did was play with a very simple technique of blending distress inks and distress oxide inks, um, having a little play with ghosting and splattering it with water. And then to tie it in with this page, which I wanted opposite, I just put a little triangle up in that corner to tie it in with the prompt for this page, which was geometric. So again, you can see I've used or done the same background without the leaf ghosting, but just with the splatters and using the same colored um, inks as I did on this page. And then here I've just cut out various triangles and had fun layering them up to hit that prompt which, as I said, was geometric. Prompt number 30 was travel. So I created this random collage and I did a Turkish map fold here under a faux postcard. There we go. And then if I open it up, this is a Turkish map fold using a napkin of the Paris Metro or Paris Underground. So that folds up and it's magnetised so it stays shut. 
this page was the last prompt which was number 31 and it was reflect so I've used the word reflect down here which I die cut out of some gold mirror board and I've used this image here which has a little lantern on the boat which reflects in the water as well as the stars reflecting in the water and I've just used invisible photo corners to create a hidden journaling spot so there you go a little collage there so let's see if I can get these back in fairly quickly for you there we go last one there we go that one's just popped out there we go so as I say a little hidden journaling spot there and then this was my page for prompt number 26 which was translucent so I used a napkin as my background then I got some pieces of vellum and I just hand stitched them all the way around for interest I've used the same tissue paper on this page to make it flow and this page is nothing more than a backing for this and this is prompt number 27 or my piece for prompt number 27 it's lyrics so i printed out my lyrics down here by scott fitzgerald and then i created a little shaker card here and backed it um, with a little collage and then this is a piece of vellum that i've created a pocket with and I've just covered over the back to create another little collage to kind, of to kind of blend in with the one on the back of the shake card and also onto this page. But it's vellum and the idea for the vellum, actually, no, I lie, it was waxed, um, waxed paper I create, created that out of. But I wanted it because it was semi-translucent and would tie in with um, page number 26. And that is all the prompts for Junk Journal January in my little journal. But I had one page left over, which was my back page. And so for that one, I just created a bonus page and just did um, a random collage in the back there. So there we go, everybody. I hope you enjoyed seeing this flip through. I hope it wasn't too lengthy and boring for you. Maybe I should have just turned on some music rather than trying to explain what I was um, what I was doing. But um, either way, I hope you enjoyed seeing what I created for Junk Journal January. And as I've said before, thank you so much to Meg for hosting Junk Journal January. And thank you to everybody who supported me throughout the month of January with your lovely comments and your encouragement. Um, bless you all, I really do appreciate it. So once again, everybody, until the next video, take care, keep smiling and bye-bye now.